you know, I think the, the phrase act as if, if people have heard that phrase, it seems like it's come up already. I, maybe I said it already once today. Um, you know, acting as if you aren't anxious is a way to deal with anxiety. Um, and, you know, similar to what Christina said, I, was, I, I read in um, Malcolm Gladwell's Blink, there's a chapter called The Naked Face. People are nodding. Do you guys remember this? It's where uh, people are trying to map the muscles. Uh, they're kind of muscular researchers looking at how, how emotions are signified. And so they spend the days, their days, moving their face to be what different emotions would be, to try to figure out what muscle groups are used. And what they found was they went home with the emotions that they had been mapping. So yeah, the, so as a kid, I feel like I was taught that you manifest, your, your emotions start inside and they manifest in the body. But this research and what you talked about, and there's just more and more research I keep reading, that you can induce the emotions inside yourself. It's, it's actually more than fake it till you make it. It's, or if, you, if you do it, you are it. So to sit like you're listening, to sit like you're not listening, um, you know, starts to, it starts to, to make it kind of real. So, you know, I think, you know, falling asleep is definitely, and maybe there's a good thing actually happening there, um, that you are kind of putting yourself in a relaxed state and you are, you're responding. And so I, anyway, I think this, 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 this notion, this is, this helps me sort of deal with the, the mind and body part that if you act in a physical way, you can kind of map it, you can kind of put it back in. Mark Marin, the WTF podcast. Anybody listen to this? Wow, come on, guys. Um, that's really more. Come on, Steve. I'm not. My references. This is a contemporary reference, but not not quite the right group here. So yeah, some big fans. It's a it's an like a disproportionately popular podcast. It's not quite at serial level, but do people do people know what serial is? Yes, of course, Steve. We get that reference. Okay, I'm just trying to you know triangulate where I should be going with these references. Um, he's a comedian that uh, has been around for a long time and he kind of hit a trough in his career and started interviewing people and podcasting kind of before it was a thing. I'd say he's one of the people that made it a thing. Um, but you know, his whole shtick is kind of about himself. He interviews people, but he talks about himself extensively and he, he his, his art, his, his performance is about himself. And then up comedy kind of does, there's a lot of people that do that. And I'm talking beyond observational humor. He just kind of tells stories about things that happen. And that is extremely common in art, right? You look at arts of various forms and you can tell that person is working something out about themselves. So they're not, they don't, they're not necessarily under supervision from Dr. Cooperman to kind of work out their thing. But part of that profession says, okay, I've got to get outside of myself. I have to figure out what's inside and kind of work through it. All right, let's do another quick exercise. Um, so this is, you know, this is about it's going to be okay. Um, and it's, it's a simple thing to, that can help. And, you know, when I asked you guys about things that were kind of pulling you out of the room, and it sounds like maybe they weren't, but uh, sometimes worries take us away. Um, you know, distraction, there's negativity is distracting, you know, uh, being worried about criticism or, or self-doubt, it takes you away from the current moment and it takes you into the future where something might happen. What if there's seven feet of snow in front of my house when I get home? What if, you know, this and this kind of happens? It's, I mean, negativity and worry is inherently non-present because it's about consequences that kind of, that can kind of come up. Um, you know, if you can find a way to tamp down that fear, um, you know, it's a way to get back to the moment and deal with just the moment. I'm not saying that in all circumstances that's the best way to handle it, but if we look at this framework of presence, which is just this moment, then you can see this thing kind of takes it away. Um, so here's the exercise I want you guys to do, and it's, it's with a neighbor. So I'm kind of copying Christina's thing here. Uh, so, you know, find, find the neighbor. Take just very, very quickly, think of something it could be real for you or it could be imagined. Something to worry about. Nothing is too minor and nothing is too major. Okay, come up with something. Here's what I want you to do. Think about it. You know, sit with your neighbor. Tell them, neighbor, here's what you say. It's okay. Okay? And then you just say yes. And then switch. Okay? Let's do this very quickly. Think of something. Tell the person. You tell them it's going to be okay. You just say yes. You acknowledge what they told you, and then flip it around. Okay? I'll just give you a second to, to do that.
You should definitely be on the second one by now. All right. Okay, so just same exercise. Let's uh, just uh, sort of same debrief exercise. Let's get somebody at the back with the microphone to be the runner and get some people at the back to offer just some quick takeaways about what happened, what their perspective is. I'm looking at you back of the room. Yes. Well, uh, let's see, what's your name? Terry. Terry's worried about his project and we told him it's gonna be okay. So I think he's better now. Uh, Katie's, <laughs> Katie's worried about getting home and I told her it's gonna be okay, but we'll see, but I think she's okay. <laughs> and uh, I'm worried about vampires and they both told me that it's probably gonna be okay, that everything should be fine, so I feel better. I'm glad that you took the exercise as seriously as the way that I introduced it. This is my fault for being flip. Right. And you know what? It's going to be okay. I'd like someone to talk about just what happened when someone said it's going to be okay, as flip as this was, as surface as this was. What just, what did, what did you experience? And if it, like, I think your critique of the, you know, you're being silly, but I think your critique is valid. Like, it, it just did this, so what do you want from me? But yeah. so, so we were a little silly over here too, but saying the thing out loud puts it out there and can take away power from it. And someone else saying that it's gonna be okay or it might be okay or okay, um, it at least acknowledges that there's a way forward. This thing doesn't define you and it doesn't have to box you. I mean, so, so we're, we're kind of joking, but the fact is you say something, you take away some of its power and someone else acknowledges it and then it's us, not just me. That's great. I'm, I'm going to just leave it at that. I think that's lovely. And, and I think the silly, I mean, the silly is appropriate because what the hell, Steve? Um, <laughs> Christina, you're looking perturbed. Did you want to, did you, did you have desire to add? I don't want to. I had the opposite experience. I had the opposite experience, even though I very much. I was going to say, I'm, this is my inadequacy. No, 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 no. It's not about you. It's Sorry. It's, but um, I just didn't believe it. I and I felt okay. almost, almost just I'm not. Sorry. It's gonna be okay, everybody. It's gonna be okay. okay. You're right. Right, I feel better. No, no, there wasn't at all. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Christina, no, but there's no, no fail. There is no fail, and it was an incredibly sincere. It's going to be okay. She opened up her heart, and she gave me a very sincere. But I just couldn't believe it, even a little bit. I felt like more anxiety. Like, and now I'm alone with this horrible feeling. <laughs> When I heard it's going to be okay, I was like, I don't see how. <laughs> I really don't see how it's going to be okay. I don't believe it, and now I'm just going to go worry by myself. <laughs> that's, about, that's about me. I feel like going back to the, remember when, we, remember when we were talking about end of days and how happy this seemed? Now we're like into like, yes, I did this. There was, I, I brought up cupcakes and nothing. So this was an experiment to kind of see what would happen. Um, you know, and I, I think, I, I don't know, I'm happy with where the experiment, I'm sorry if you feel sort of desperate concern. Anybody else? Is anybody else in the, in, in? Okay. Yeah. I didn't know what I was supposed to feel when she said that. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm still feeling it. Interesting. Okay. Yes. Do you think it depends on the scope of the problem? Like if someone says to you, I'm worried because I have cancer, yeah. and you say, it's gonna be okay. Well, what the hell, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you laugh, but no, I mean, anyone that's gone through loss or their own, right? There is a point of getting to, it doesn't happen in this room in 10 seconds, but there is a point that I think people struggle to get to, or they maybe eventually get to, or don't, around is going to be okay. I mean, every, I mean, it's the, it's the Kubler-Ross, right? Acceptance is somewhere in there. 